Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about everything you need to know about the operating profit ratio. My name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified accountant if this is the first time you visited my channel because all of my actual videos are dedicated to my lovely subscribers and today is no different as you can see in the middle of the screen because all of the ratio videos are dedicated to ANURAC and if you've got any questions or requests be sure to leave me a comment below, I answer them all and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos and of course if you like this one be sure to give it a massive like and share it with any of your study buddy mates as well because it's going to help them out because in today's class as ever this is a little run through that we're going to walk and talk you through what is actually probab uh, probability profitability should i say we've also got to talk about the operating profit ratio formula then they're going to put that ratio formula into an example then from that example with the figures tell me and actually analyze what is going on here so that if you've got a question yourself in front of you you can apply it to yours and you can get full marks on it because then finally to get those extra final top marks we're going to take that operating profit ratio and then apply it to some real world application as well these are real critical things that you need to get down in your work so the first key thing is what actually is profitability on here? Well, the key actual sort of definition that you need to be aware of quite simply is the difference between the revenues of the business that we bring in minus all the associated costs to actually generate those revenues. And what we have at the end of it is our profit. And this comes down to, at the end of the day, how effective that company that we're thinking about or maybe starting up ourselves is actually making that profit from its daily operations and where they invest their capital funds. As ever, if you were to invest your own money or taking someone else's money, there is going to be risk and reward. And of course, that is where with higher risk that we take on board, you would expect a higher reward at the end of the day. But with profitability, there are really two key things that we can do with that profit at the end of an accounting period. The first one being we can actually retain those profits within the business, reinvest it into future operations. Or secondly, we can actually distribute that to shareholders who, like we said, have taken that risk, have invested funds, and they get a return in the form of a dividend. This is also a good measure of actual success for business where we could compare year on year on year or potentially say this is company A, that's their profitability for the year and this is company B, that's their profitability for the year. Compare and contrast which one is in a better state and which one would you invest your capital into. The formula itself for the operating profit ratio can be seen on the screen now. So make sure you take it down where we have the operating profit divided by the revenue, also known as sales or turnover, and multiplied by 100 because then that is going to give us an answer expressed as a percentage. In essence, this is the key thing to get down here is the operating profit is after we've deducted the cost of sales and the operating expenses, but this is also before interest and tax have been deducted. So you may also hear it known as actual PBIT in maybe your core text that you're reading. All these elements, which will become a lot more clearer on the next slide when we actually come to have a look at an example, are all found in the income statement, also known as the profit and loss. And along with actually calculating the operating profit ratio in your examination or question you're having to do yourself, make sure you're actually comparing it and linking it to also the gross profit margin, the net profit margin, and also the return on capital employed ratios on there. These are really key critical areas, and I've also done videos on all of them on the channel, so be sure to check them out. They're definitely going to help you out. Pop it in your notes as a to-do list, a call to action after this video. So the first key thing on the actual example, as you can see on the screen, is actually picking up on where the operating profit or PBIT number is. I've put on the screen there the operating profit formula. So maybe you actually want to take a moment to actually have a go at this. But this is where we talked about it before that, as you can see here, the operating profit is after all of those cost of sales deductions, then we get our gross profit, then we deduct our operating expenses. So just to be crystal clear on here, the cost of sales relate to actually producing the actual product, the raw materials, the direct labor, whereas the operating expenses of business are more sort of indirect, so it could be the admin expenses, maybe the marketing on there, just so you're under, you understand and can differentiate between it when we come to analyze it later. So looking to actually apply the figures, as you can see on the screen now, 
taking that £500 for the operating profit, dividing it by the sales, the turnover, the revenue, as you can see on the screen, and that's going to give us a healthy answer of 50%, which is a reasonably high percentage on here. So what does that actually mean? Well, for every £1 of product or service that we actually sell, that is generating 50 pence worth of operating profit margin on there. So now you've got to say, well, we've got, we've got those figures of £500 for the, operating profit ratio, uh, for, for the operating profit margin on there for the actual absolute term, but then you've got to say, well, how are we going to measure it? Well, that is where we've got the two key terms on there. I've just talked about the absolute term of, if you have a look on the income statement, £500 is that actual value of profit at that actual point in the actual pro forma. Whereas in relative terms, where we worked out the percentage, this is where we can see it as a proportion compared to revenue. And you can compare and contrast these figures with maybe the previous year's accounts or a competitor, which you could add in your actual narrative of your answer. But then you've got to ask yourself, well, yes, okay, James, I'm going to take the formula, I'm going to apply it to my question in front of me, but how do I actually increase that operating profit margin? So how do I get that 50% percentage to go up? Well, there are two key steps on here that you need to discuss in your answer. And the first one being to actually increase revenue. So maybe that's actually harnessing our actual or normal customers that we have. Maybe we're looking at other revenue streams. These are other maybe different product lines. These are other things you could actually discuss in your answer. The second thing is actually decreasing the cost of sales and the operating expenses. So by doing this, that operating profit margin, the 50%, is only going to go one way, which is up. We can actually reduce those costs, maybe being more efficient in our processes, reducing wastage on there. We'll talk about that later on with the real world application. You then could also link it to, well, which stakeholders are actually interested in the operating profit specifically? And these can be either internal or external, but the main ones to highlight in your answer should be the board of directors, because they want the business to be as effective as possible to generate high profit, rate, uh, profit margins. Investors, because they that links into their net profit later on, where they could get a, a higher or lower dividend. And also the financial accountants, because they've got to record these figures. Then you've got to say, well, what to do with the actual operating profit? And well, the first key thing is, if you want to have a look back at the actual uh, income statement on there is, well, have we got enough to cover our interest payments and our tax payments? Because this could lead to a risk of actual liquidation if we don't have enough to pay them. We also touched on it before that it's also a figure used to compare to competitors in the same market segment because tax and interest can be a lot more variable and controllable by um, actual individuals in the organization, for example. So the actual operating profit margin is more of a sort of reliable figure than potentially the net profit. But at the end of the day, you would compare and contrast the two of them on there, just to be crystal clear. So we've talked about real world application there briefly, but then we've got to say, well, let's take that operating profit ratio and start to apply it now. The key first thing to get down in your notes is, and just to be aware of in your examination, you could get any type of organization. And it's really critical that you understand that not every business operates in the same way. And you've got to consider those other factors, try to picture in your mind that business operating and how those figures are going to be translated into the financial statements and the annual report. So say, for example, if you've got a startup company that's maybe six to nine months down the line, and you'd expect them to maybe actually be making a loss in the first few years. They're just starting to generate their client base, and maybe they've had to put some heavy investment in some non-current assets. So the operating profit ratio would be particularly low on that. Whereas if you're actually an established company where we could actually get some comparable information year on year, we'd expect to see more steady operating levels to actually give a more guaranteed and stable return to some of the investors, for example, and actually making sure the business is sustainable long term. Finally on there, you've got the public list, uh, listed company. So where they've grown really big now, and they may be on, say, a stock exchange on here. And this is where shareholder wealth maximization comes into it, that if you're a shareholder in a business, the two key things that you want to have are dividends to go up, hence operating profit ratio has to be high, and also you actually want the share price to increase, which again links into having a healthy operating profit margin. Finally, management are actually required for 
uh, the management, should I say, of interest payments. So what that means there is you've got your operating profit less your interest just below that. So we've got to manage those interest payments and it can link into the other ratio known as the interest cover. By how many times can our operating profit cover the amount of interest we have to pay. So another factor you could put in in your discussions that say internal management would have to discuss on there. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've liked it. And if you have, give it a massive thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos that could be the difference in you passing your exam. Click one of them on the screen. They could get you those little extra marks. And as ever on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.